On this episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to fully renovate this J-Box with all these wires, make it look clean, and make it so that all the switches will fit nice and snug without having to force all those wires in there. So let's make more room and clean up all these wires. So stay tuned. Hi friends, welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, consider pressing the subscribe notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So just a quick disclaimer, we are gonna be working with electrical components today. My electrical codes and your electrical codes might be different, so always make sure that you're always current with your current local electrical codes. Make sure you have the proper permits and make sure you always turn off the power from your circuit breaker whenever you're working with electricity. And if you're unconfident and unsure about working with electrical, please contact a certified and qualified electrician. With that being said, my full disclaimer is in the description down below. Let's get into today's episode. As you can see, there are three switches that's already installed onto this three gang J box. So those two switches are two single poles and the other one is a dimmer switch. So we're gonna go and change out everything. The dimmer switch, we don't really need anymore. The only reason why I'm changing this out is because this J box is a very old style version. It's made out of like fiberglass, I believe, but it is very shallow. I wanna change it out to a much deeper J box. And at the same time, while we're taking out this old J box off and replacing it with a brand new one, we're gonna be moving around some wires, make it a little cleaner, get rid of wires that, that don't necessarily need to be there, like certain pigtails and whatnot. And we're gonna change out some connectors to better ones. So let's go and change this out. The J box here is sinking in towards the wall. So here's another angle where the box is slowly sinking in into the drywall. A lot of overspray of texture inside the box as well. So are the wires. Before we take out this electrical box out of this wall, it's very important that we label the wiring, especially where the load and the line wires are coming from. The line wire, which is this hot area right here. This is the one that is coming from the circuit breaker. Now the load wires are these three right here. I already separated them like this, but it's very wise to actually mark them as what I'm doing right now with just simple masking tape. Just leading onto one of the outlets onto the wall. This one is the one that's going to the light that's outside of the house. And this one's the light that is going to the living room. So I'm gonna take out the wire nuts out of all the neutrals, like so. Now don't be scared to have them all taken out like this. This one's paired with this one. This one's paired with that one. It's a fairly older house, so all the wiring is fairly old. But I'm just going to keep it as is because if we go replace the whole thing, it's going to take us a long time. First, and use that to untwist the wiring. And now we actually have five cables that are going in here. I'm going to go and turn on the circuit breaker. Again, make sure this is nice and guarded. Don't let anyone get near here and make sure you do this at your own risk. So we're gonna turn back on the circuit breaker and we're gonna test out which one is actually the line wire. I was assuming that this was the wire that was actually the hot line, but it's actually this one right here. With H, which is the hot wire. So if you look at this old J-Box, there's a lot of debris. And the difference with this J-Box is that it is very shallow. The one where we're placing it is a lot deeper. And I'll measure it in there so you can see it later on the difference. If you wanna know where this connected is, you gotta find the stud. It's either gonna be on the left or the right. The easiest way to do that is if you have a stud finder and you know that the stud is on the right side. So that's where it's connected. And this is connected by nails. If you don't have a stud finder, you can get a flashlight and you can go peek between these these little gaps, this hacksaw blade. I'm just gonna go and wedge it between the crack right here. And you can already feel that there's a nail here. And if you go all the way up, there is a nail up there also. So I'm using a pry bar to do this because this is an old school box. And if we look right here, you'll see how it's attached to the stud. All right, so now the box is loose. We got all the wires out. All you gotta do is tip this like this and it should pop out like that. Very old school. It's made out of fiberglass, I believe. Now look at the new one that we're gonna be replacing it with. This one is an old work J box. You can tell that it's old work because it has these little fins that's gonna clamp against the drywall. Now I'm only using this because it's made out of switches. Now, if you are gonna be going using this on outlets, I don't recommend it, especially if it's a high traffic one that you use a lot because over time it could possibly get you know loose. 
Now looking at the sizes, you can definitely tell that the newer one is a lot deeper by one inch. The height, it's about the same. Opening looks like the new one is a little bit taller. So definitely, this is the way we're gonna go. I have one, two, three, four, five cables that's gonna go through here. You wanna just wanna do it one at a time. So once, if you move one set of cables, you're gonna go and move the next one the same amount of length. And little by little, you're gonna start pulling them out. For me, since I have five, it's gonna be a little more timely. So that's my tip for you. Just take it nice and slow. Use your needle nose pliers or Lyman's pliers. That will be your best tip. Now, since this box is a little bit wider and a little bit taller, we did relieve a little bit of drywall all the way around in certain sections so that this can fit just like that. Now that we got all the wires feeding inside, let's go and secure this now. When you're tightening down these flags, in this case, we have four, use your electrical screwdriver to do this so that you don't, you know, strip out the screws. Sometimes those flags are really hard to screw in um, because they're fairly brand new. So just take your time, twist them little by little until they hug against the drywall. We have five neutral wires that we're all gonna connect together. Now we can either use a wire nut to put all these wires together. But in my case, there's gonna be, there's a lot of wires to be putting one wire nut. It's gonna be too messy for me. For me, I'm gonna be using these Wagos 221s. This is the five port one. They're very easy. All you gotta do is lift, lift up these levers and then insert the wire and then lock them in place. Looking at these switches, you can see that they have been backstabbed. So if you're not familiar with that term backstab, that means that you put the wire right on those little holes at the back of the switches or outlets. And I highly don't recommend you doing the backstabbing method because you, as you can see, this is the results of what happens when you backstab. There's a little bit of wire that's gonna get exposed and over time it could possibly come out. These are the new switches that we're gonna be replacing the old ones with. And this is what I meant by backstabbing versus back wiring. Back wiring is where you get, here's a strip gauge at the back. What you do is you take this wire, insert it through the back, like so. Just tighten it down with your ECX screwdriver. Here are all the switches again. This time I added all the ground wires, like that. So these are all gonna be all pigtailed going all to one connected to the rest of the ground wires. All the ground wire into this, all this Wagos connectors and all the hot wires that are feeding to the power. So these are all gonna be feeding to the power. They're all feeding into this, all these Wago connectors right here. Same with all the neutrals. Notice how there's a lot more room inside this J box now that we can actually fit all these wires. Everything all wired, all the single pole switches are all lined up. If you're interested on the full detail on how to wire a single pole switch, I'll leave a link up here. I did a specific video on how that is wired, but it's very straightforward. But if you just want a specific video on single pole switch wiring, check out this link up here. If you're probably saying, why didn't I just use wire nuts? Well, I like using the Wago 221s because if I need to replace something or I need to switch any wire around, it's easy. All you gotta do is lift up the lever and you can just take out the wire and put it on the next one that you wish. If it was a wire nut, you definitely have to untwist it, untwist the wire, and go through all that to get to one wire. This, very easy to gain access, very convenient. And push the wires with your hands or your fingers, but you can only go so far deep in there. So I like to use this Volt Claw. This is a non-conductive um, device. It has many functions. It has a push and pull. And I, if you watch my other videos, I've used it a lot of times interested on this one i'll leave the link down below look behind each one of these switches you can see that behind the box there are plenty of room left which is what we want because later on in the future video which is probably the next video i'll be making is how to install this timer switch which will be replacing this this box will definitely accommodate this thick bulky 
um, girthy timer switch. For the finishing touches, we're just gonna put the plate cover. So there you have it friends, so that's how you pretty much change out your old messy J-Box, how to clean up the clutter, changing out to a bigger and much wider and deeper J-Box, and to switch out those old switches to these much more efficient and much better looking ones. Okay, so if you have any questions on any of the ones I did, just leave a comment down below. Like, comment, subscribe if you found this video super helpful, and I'll see you in the next episode.